for the last few weeks, we've been looking at the characteristics of God's heroes that our children learned about in this year's Vacation Bible School, which was called Hero Simple. So far, we've talked about how God's heroes have heart, how God's heroes have courage, how God's heroes have wisdom. And today, we're going to talk about how God's heroes have hope. Hope, something most of us have and all of us need. Hope, something talked about and promised throughout all of Scripture. Hope, something we as followers of the Christ are called to offer to others on this planet. Hope. On the fourth day of VBS, when the kids learned about hope, they focused on the Beatitudes, a series of blessings from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that teach us all about God's priorities for our world and about how we are to live in God's kingdom here on earth. One of the lessons they learned was that God's heroes are those who are humble and kind, those who have compassion toward others, and who are called by God to lift up those who are hopeless. As I look around at this room, I see many of you who do this in a myriad of ways each and every day, through your work, through your places of volunteerism, through your supportive presence in the lives of those who are struggling and in need of hope. I'm also reminded of how grateful I am for this church, Journey of Faith, a community that provides hope not only for those of us who call this home, but for many beyond these walls. Yet even as I give thanks for you, I can't help but wonder if there isn't more we could be doing. Part of building the kingdom of God Jesus talks so frequently about is learning to work with others in building communities that themselves sow seeds of hope in places we've yet to reach. So our task as a church, as a community of faith, is to figure out just what God is calling us to do next and what that next or that more will look like, who it will involve, what will it take to make that happen, who do we need to be partnering with, and the list goes on. All around us, people are looking for a glimmer of hope. The question is, how do we reach them? How do we offer them the hope that we ourselves have found in Jesus the Christ? It's not easy questions, are they? They're certainly not ones that lend themselves to quick answers. In fact, I suspect that whatever it is God is calling us as a church to do will involve something way outside the box we call normal and a lot of stretching and growing on our part, and that includes me. It will most certainly involve dreaming big and being bold and taking risk, knowing that we might fail 100 times before we find out what it is God has in mind for us. And that's okay, because as Paul reminds us, all things are possible with God. If you don't believe that, take a moment to watch this video that offers just a brief glimpse into how one man's vision and his trust in God literally transformed a community that was almost completely 
devoid of hope. The young musicians in our next story have performed around the world. They've even met European royalty. Yet they live in a garbage dump in South America. Their secret? A visionary director who has taught them to turn trash into treasure. Carolina Martinez brings us this amazing story of Paraguay's Recycle Orchestra. Cateura, on the outskirts of Asuncion in Paraguay, is a community formed around the landfill. Most people here make their living by selling plastic bottles or anything they can recycle from garbage. There is trash everywhere, and poverty and lack of education are a bad combination for the future of its inhabitants. Mainly children and young people who are prone to delinquency and drugs. But for the past six years, a light of hope has been shining in Cateura through music, and this is how it sounds. This is the Recycle Orchestra. It's got that name because all the instruments these kids play are made with materials found in the trash. Old water pipes become saxophones. Forks, knives, spoons and coins become the keys. Cans and bake trays are used to make violins and percussion drums are made with x-rays and wooden pallets or trash cans. It all started with an idea of an environmental technician and music teacher to take children out of the streets and out of the landfill. Fabio Chavez, who used to be the choir master of his church, directs this innovative project. This is a social project that uses music as a catalyst. We are working intensively with many families and many children. We propose a life change projected into the future. This is a mission. I feel God's presence. I believe things happen according to His plans. This mission was also possible thanks to the help of a trash picker, now turned into a luthier, who was from the beginning in charge of finding the materials to manufacture the musical instruments. Garbage is not garbage. If you have creative ideas, you can do anything with garbage. I think we have to be grateful for the gifts we have received. And we must be responsible, because those gifts should serve others, too. It's like what the Bible says, you can't hide a light under the table. The light has to be where it can illuminate everyone. And the orchestra is illuminating Cateura. Until a couple of years ago, no one had ever heard of this place. But all that changed thanks to the trailer of a documentary film that is now being released, Landfill Harmonic. In recent years, the Recycle Orchestra has been invited to perform concerts worldwide. It has received awards from the royal crowns of the Netherlands and Spain. Fabio Chavez and the children of Cateura have given lectures at the famous TED conferences and they are inspiring millions. Having nothing is not an excuse for doing nothing. And what we're doing is an example of that. I realize that I have nothing to envy because everything happens for a reason. And I know this is all God's work. Andres is 20 years old and has been in the orchestra since he was 17. He has traveled to more than 20 countries for the concerts, but he dreams of staying in Cateura the rest of his life to transform it and make it a model community. Traveling around the world opens your mind and makes you think, why can't our country be like that? Why can't our community be like that? Some people are born with everything, others are not, but everyone has to make progress in their own way. This is ours, with music, with recycling. Maybe we are changing part of our society and the mentality of our own people. In slums like Cateura, even houses are made from recycled garbage. A normal violin would cost more than a house, but here the impossible becomes possible. And the music that comes from recycled instruments is not only giving hope to the children of this community in Paraguay, but also around the world.
Following Paraguay's example, in 2014, a recycle orchestra was created in Spain, and it already has 50 children that were at risk of social exclusion. This is the first of several projects that are being inspired by Cateura. Thanks to their hard work and the concerts these kids give, they were able to buy a property where they are now building the largest conservatory in the area, with 20 classrooms to accommodate the 200 children that already attend the music school, and an amphitheater for 300 people. It would also function as a community center, with free crafts classes for all the residents of Cateura. And they are also providing scholarships so all the students have the opportunity to go to college. The solution is not to run away from a place. The solution is to change the place. You have to have projects first and then resources will come. It's ideas that change the world. In Cateura, Paraguay, Carolina Martinez for CBN News. Pretty amazing, huh? I first saw that on 60 Minutes um, or something about this on 60 Minutes a few years ago and just totally just amazed at what one man's vision could turn into. Fabio Chavez is one of God's heroes. He began this back in 2006. That's when he first began sowing seeds of hope in a pretty hopeless situation. And with the help of his craftsmen you saw in the film, Nicolas Arcola Gomez, an entire community has been transformed through the gift of music. As the Prince Claus Award uh, the orchestra received in 2013 states, it is a youth orchestra that is transforming lives. It is unique in its ingenious use of humble local resources and a beacon of pride and hope for the local community. The recycled orchestra, as it's sometimes called, is honored for bringing music and joy to many people, for their innovation and communal collaboration and using the resources at hand to create possibilities and transcend their difficult circumstances, for engineering self, for engendering self-esteem, community pride, and social cohesion through musical expression, and for showing that culture is a human necessity and that material poverty need not be an obstacle to a life rich in culture. As you can see through their vision and work, lives have definitely been changed and now not only in Katura, but through similar musical organizations in Spain, as they mentioned, and now Brazil and Burundi and Mexico and Panama, and I suspect by now, in other countries as well. And while I think we can all agree that the story of the Landfill Harmonic Orchestra is pretty amazing, I think we can all agree that we are called to be instruments of God's hope in a broken and hurting world. I think we can also agree that there are times in our own lives when we find ourselves in need of a word of hope, amen? Sure, the conditions in which we live may be far removed from the conditions we saw in this video, but that doesn't for a second negate the fact that we have struggles of our own. Yes, they may be first world struggles, but they are struggles that are real. There are times in our lives when tragedy or illness or economics are trying to care for someone who is ill. Or maybe it's just the struggle of day-to-day -day living that seem to close in on us and we at times find ourselves feeling helpless and yes, sometimes even hopeless. And for me, that's where this passage I read from Romans comes in. For me, it is God's word of hope in the midst of the most trying or most difficult of times. Hear part of that again. Therefore, since we have made righteous through his, Jesus, faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him and we boast in the hope, the hope of God's glory. 
But not only that, we take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I like that last verse, verse 5 in particular. Hope is not something that we work out ourselves, but something we take in through the activity of God's Holy Spirit. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. In other words, hope is not the result of wishful thinking or simply being hopeful or even a product of how much we hurt. Hope happens because, as Paul says in Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And who better to know this than Paul, the one who had suffered so much on account of his faith, the one who had seen God take shape in the world and in his own life, most concretely in the cross of Christ, the cross by which God dignifies and sanctifies all human suffering by promising to be there with us and for us as we struggle to be faithful in this world. Think about it a moment. If God's greatest revelation to us was made manifest in and through the struggle and suffering of God's Son, hung on a cross, then what suffering of ours can ever truly be God forsaken? God promises to be with us in the midst of our suffering and to work through it to be, build character and endurance and to increase our capacity for hope. Something I feel like I always have to say is that God never desires or causes any suffering we may experience. But instead, God promises to be with us in the midst of whatever suffering we may experience and to use it whenever possible for some greater good. And again, as Paul said, to redeem it by joining it with Christ's own suffering on the cross. In other words, no tear shed goes unnoticed by God and no frustration or hurt or loss is unimportant to God. Our lives may not be as tragic as some of those we saw in this video, but no tragedy, personal, communal, national, or global is ever ignored by God, which means to me that God is always present with us in our suffering and he dignifies it by his presence. Suffering exists in our world on grand scales and on much smaller scales like our own personal lives. But whatever that suffering might be, our faith teaches us that we can have hope because God walks with us through it, large or small. That God's presence is always there in the midst of pain and struggle, in the midst of triumph and tragedy, bringing out our best, supporting us, loving us, upholding us, but also calling us to offer that hope to others. That's the hope Paul talks about. And that kind of hope is, as he well knows, a very powerful thing at work in our lives and in our world. Thanks be to God. Amen.